Gate, home to 1.4 million people, host of the largest beer festival in the world, and today the purveyor of the largest standing bebendum in Germany. It just so happens to be the case, but we're here to uh, introduce you to something incredibly special, incredibly unique. I feel very privileged to uh, have this exclusive opportunity to take you along for a world first, and it really is, as the title of this video would suggest. Um, it's a, somewhat of a game changer. Some might say that Michelin are reinventing the wheel. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the world's first almost production-ready airless car tire. Okay, so we're here with the man who knows a lot about this <laughs> particular product. I, now I'm stood in front of it. I am fascinated about yes. this tie. I've never seen anything like it. I saw photos before I arrived here. Yeah. But when you actually see it, see it it's, re it's really different. It's a, yeah. it's a different thing entirely. So we're going to point you down here because it's fascinating to look at and we're going to ask all of the right questions. So the first thing I'm seeing is that, am I right in thinking that the, the wheel comes as the tire? Yes, it all comes together. It's an assembly between the tire and the wheel. So it will arrive if you were ordering it today, which is not possible, but uh, uh -huh. it will arrive like that at home. Are we looking around about 2024-ish? Yes, we are still looking to launch uh, that tire in 2024. Okay. And uh, the big, let's say, consumer we are looking after is Fleet. Okay. Uh, OEMs, of course, uh -huh. but also, you know, uh, emerging countries, mainly, sure. where they still have a lot of puncturers. The main original aim of this was to reduce the amount of um, tires that were scrapped due to punctures, damage, exactly. etc. Exactly. Okay. So we look at uh, how much tires are damaged each year around the world mm -hmm. and we came up with uh, the, the number of 20%. So 20% of tires that are removed because of a puncture uh -huh. or a sidewall damage or irregular pressure issue. Okay. And 20% uh, that's about 200 million tires per year. 200 million tires a year, a year yes. are finished too early yes. because of a puncture, a blowout, yes, pothole. Exactly. 200 million tires yes. don't even finish the job. <laughs> no. Okay, so not only is it practical application, I guess from a sustainability point of view, uh, that's a game changer, right? Yes, because you can imagine that to make all those tires that are removed earlier, uh -huh. you have to take the raw material outside of the earth. Yes. You, of course, have to make them, so consume energy to make them. And of course, people will restart with uh, new tires, so it means that they consume more energy in their vehicles also. Phenomenal, wow. So, would you mind please talking us through the, the remarkable construction of this? So, what's fascinating is from certain angles, it looks like a conventional tire. Yes. So, so let's start from, the outside, am I right in thinking that this is effectively a conventional tread pattern surface? Yes, you do exactly the same as you would do, so you could can, can create a uh, like a winter uh, tire or uh -huh. a summer tire, so conventional. But behind that, you have a fiberglass okay. uh, structure that carries the load, so what we call the belt here uh -huh. and what we call the spokes. Okay. And all that is a fiberglass <laughs> that has been developed by Michelin. We have 50 pat patents around that okay. to protect it. It's a very thin but yet very strong fiberglass. And you have thousands of tiny fiberglass everywhere to be able to carry the load and replace the air inside the tire by carrying the load but being very light. So 50 patents yes. for one tire. Yeah, just so on there is a time. lot of innovation in this. Thing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> wow. That's okay. why you have never seen it before. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and on the topic of tires, Michelin is all about mobility. So we've teamed up with BlackCircles.com to offer you an exclusive discount code. Use JWWSAVE at checkout. You've got until the 27th of September to make the most of it. Head over using the link in the description below. And in terms of, I mean, how long has it taken from, from, from early concept to what we're about to drive here? How, how long is the journey of getting to this stage? From the blank page, about 10 years. 10 years! <laughs> this is a 10 year tire. Would I be right in thinking that because the tire comes with the wheel, mm -hmm. you could effectively fit your new tires at home? Yes, you could. Without, what about when it comes to balancing and things like that? Does that Yes, the balancing will be done at the Michelin factory. Really? Okay. So the wow. assembly with the wheels will be done there. And uh, so everything will arrive already pre-balanced and uh, you just have to put them on your vehicle. This is, um, this might not seem like a big deal to anyone <laughs> watching down the lens right now, but let me assure you, um, 
turns out that I'm one of the first people to drive it outside of Michelin, which having worked with these guys for around about four years now, I know <laughs> what a big deal this it is. is. It is. It's a really big deal. So, uh, but actually, you know, that aside, it's fascinating. All I've got in my head right now is the visual the of visual, what yes. those folks are doing. Yeah. I know this seems like such an obvious statement, but I just never thought I'd see the day that we would replace air from a tire. We're driving along some tram lines, we've got potholes, we've got grids. One thing I must stress at this point is this isn't a review because it is a pre-production tire. It's very strictly a prototype product, so this isn't any sort of ob objective opinion. It's more of a fascination piece mm -hmm. that this is even real. <laughs> it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's really cool. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. So have you had much involvement in the feel of this in terms of how it feels to drive or has, has it gone through the traditional methods at Ladoux, etc.? It has gone through the traditional method of uh, you know, making one prototype, testing it, adjusting it, uh, make new ones and, and retesting. So this one has gone through uh, hours of, of testing with our pilots, of course, on machines yes. to be able to finally arrive to that uh, level, let's say, of maturity uh -huh. that basically you arrive almost at the same performance than the traditional tires. I think the biggest compliment you can say is if I didn't know, I wouldn't know. Yes, you that's just, a huge compliment for us. You're just <laughs> going about it, right? Yeah. I mean, here we are in an electric Mini, which in itself is perfect around, around town. Has this had any, I guess, specific development with EV product in mind, or is this to cover full spectrum? Well, it's to cover the full spectrum, but of course, we had in mind the special, you know, new mobility like mm -hmm. a connected, uh, autonomous, shared and electric. Sure. Uh, so, of course, ve electric vehicles are perfectly uh, designed for that. So, of course, the tire today is not specifically designed for the for the mini electric. Sure. And are we going to see any Nurburgring? I'm just jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> Probably you can feel it, but uh, yeah. also the, the steering is very direct. Yes. So because you don't have that pneumatic, uh -huh. uh, let's say, uh, loose of sure. feeling, uh, here is as soon as you put an, you have an input in the direction, you turn. It's so uh, just mechanical. Without it having a traditional sidewall, does that help it turn in sharper? There's less flex. Yeah, exactly. Because all the time you have that sideway flexing, uh -huh. and here the spokes are, are just. Uh, in the good direction, let's say, for transmitting the effort directly. So, so maybe we will see it on the Nurburgring one day. <laughs> we will probably see, but you know, our pilots yeah. have already tried it have they? Uh, ar around the limits okay. and above the limits of the tire. And uh, what they say is basically the, the 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 feeling they had was that it was much more, uh, let's say, uh, easy, direct, uh, direct, yeah. easy to uh, to go above the limits. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So even though I was sort of half joking, maybe, maybe one day yes. there may be an application where it's applied to something a bit more sporty. Yes, exactly. That's interesting. Wow. So comments below. We've just been having this chat because you can engineer this tire with or without a sidewall. Yes. In fact, the sidewall will be only a design piece if we were if to you, put that. Okay. So we, we are not sure yet. Okay. Some people like it without the sidewall because mm -hmm. you see for the first time the function of the tire. Sure. Uh, you see it working. Yes. And uh, some people would like to take the opportunity to, to say we should design something around that. So, yes. Okay. So, well, this might be interesting research for you. We might have a few thousand people say yes. sidewall or no sidewall. Let us know. It will be genuinely interesting. Exactly. So send you us your, your, your feeling about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was cool, but one of the other big reasons we're here is to talk about the topic of sustainability. Now, let me show you some really cool stuff. So, I, along with many other Michelin staff members, have just been picking litter. Here's some of it right now, and it will be going into this massive collection bin, for want of a better word, right here. And there's everything, but the majority of what we're searching for to put into here is plastic-based stuff. Now, the reason for that is uh, Michelin have pioneered a incredible solution 
to recycle even polystyrene, which anyone has uh, delved into that subject will know that it's basically impossible. Uh, but they've got this, uh, this situation here called a regen lab where they can take plastics, um, carbon black from old tires, wood and polystyrene. Now did you know, fun fact, yogurt pots are actually made from polystyrene. Yes, that stuff that's typically found in your packaging when you buy a new product, that is also made from yogurt pots. And the problem with it is, is it's nigh on impossible to recycle. So Michelin, together with some clever companies, have teamed up and have actually developed a way of recycling plastics and polystyrene it, to such a degree that they can use it in the compound of their future tires. Imagine that, how cool is that? Once this is all full up and we've done our job of helping to clean up the parks around Munich, the objective is to use these plastics in their upcoming tires. Now, Michelin has an objective to ramp up the production of these tires, which contain recycled plastic, particularly polystyrene, starting in 2024. So it's really not far off. That also just so happens to coincide with the uh, production time for Uptis tire as well, which is pretty cool indeed. Furthermore, on the topic of sustainability, this is what's known as the 46. So this is made of 46% sustainable, recyclable materials. Now, you'll be forgiven for assuming that most of that is recycled tires, and there is a decent proportion of that. However, in here is components such as lemon peel. <laughs> I'm not joking. Orange peel, pine, like pine cone oil in there. Um, it's just remarkable what compounds have gone into making a racing slick possible. Now, what's really cool about this particular tire is that it will be developed on the H24 project, which is the hydrogen powered Le Mans car, which will be racing in the not too distant future. So to have a sustainable tire ran on a hydrogen racing car is probably the ultimate test bed as far as uh, tire development goes from a sustainability point of view at least. So that's very cool and awesome to see sustainability making its way into racing as well. So what does all of that mean? Well. Michelin has sent me some stats and I'm having to read them to you because I'm struggling myself to get my head around this, but when Michelin get it all together and have this recycling program in place, nearly 4 billion, with a B, 4 billion PET bottles, plastic bottles, could be recycled into Michelin tires every year. Think about that, that's absolutely unbelievable. So for one tire, 12 and a half plastic bottles would be needed, according to Michelin's internal calculations. It's just incredible. And that's the equivalent, isn't it? You ready? That's the equivalent of 80,000 tons of polystyrene waste, which could be recycled into Michelin tires every single year. The equivalent of 143 pots of yogurt would be needed to make one tire. Isn't That just makes me feel great that, that all of a sudden there are solutions coming into play. I mean, we've seen these photos of beautiful oceans having these islands full of floating plastic. This solution can contribute to recycling that and using it for a fantastic product. Ironically, moments like this make me feel really proud to be an ambassador for this brand. What a great company. Day. You know, I've been working with Michelin now for four years and I've been proud to work with them since day one. Uh, and today, more than any, I think their slogan, a better way forward, is probably standing as strong as it possibly can. Because after experiencing what I've shown you today, and hopefully you've watched to the end of the video, you'll agree that they truly are pioneering a, literally a better way forward. So I think the recycling breakthroughs that they've developed with regards to being able to recycle polystyrene. Do some research on that. It's honestly, for whatever reason, it's, uh, it's proven to be nigh on impossible to recycle polystyrene for this sort of application at least. So the fact that we're gonna be able to take billions of bottles 
remarkable, remove that from the environment and put it to good use in our tyres. I think quite literally is a better way forward. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, questions and comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Big, big thank you once again to Michelin for allowing me to drive uh, the Uptis tyre. Uh, that really meant a lot. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you next time. Ciao.